So earlier this year, we uh, lost a very memorable game. So recently, Club Penguin Island came out, and I was curious to see how exactly Club Penguin Origined. I thought that it would be just a simple little thing, and it actually has a lot of backstory, and I was really surprised about that. So, let's begin. So in July of 2000, Lance Prieb was continuing his development on a game called Snow Blasters. I can't find any images or gameplay footage because this game was never made, it was just being developed. But while he was still working on it, he got inspiration from a little comic that he glanced over on his desk. And this comic or cartoon is made by Farside, and it contained a bunch of penguins and I bet that they look pretty familiar. Lance switched paths and began developing another game titled Experimental Penguins. The game was released by Rocket Snail Games in that same month of July of 2000, but it quickly ended next year. Then Rocket Snail would release Penguin Chat in January of 2003. Then after the success of that, Penguin Football Chat was released, which some people referred to as Penguin Chat 2, and after that was doing pretty good, Lance thought, we need a big idea. So him and a few co-workers began to find ideas, but some issues came along the way. One example is making the game free of ads. That's a pretty nice thing to think about because ads are annoying, and also because the direct audience was supposed to be kids, selling something like shaving wouldn't really appeal to kids. I would also believe it's because they want to keep the quality, because when you have ads around your game, it doesn't really look professional. It sort of looks a little bit cheesy. Like here in Florida, we have a lot of hotels that plaster like Disney tickets at discount rates and that looks a little bit cheesy. But hey, you gotta make your money somehow. And that's the route that Snail didn't want to go. I think that's a pretty nice thing to think about. By 2005, they're debating on what the name should be. Some thought that it should be called Penguin Chat 4 to continue with the line of Penguin Chat games because Penguin Chat 3 was released around that time but eventually Club Penguin just came out of nowhere. And the game would be released on October 24th of 2005, but the team actually wanted to postpone it all the way to 2010. Not soon after, in August of 2005, Penguin chat servers would go offline for good, and the company would just focus on Club Penguin. Although the whole company was actually poor, and the developers would have to use their own credit cards to fund the game. Club Penguin would only begin with 15,000 players. That number jumped to 2.6 million in only a year. But later, in 2007 that number would go to 3.9 million players and so on and so on. Surprisingly though, there was actually a lack of marketing due to costs, and a lot of people began joining still. Disney would notice this rapid growth and would want to buy the company. They paid the team $350 million, and on top of that, Disney said that they would throw another $350 million if Club Penguin would reach their profit goal in 2009. Sadly, that didn't. But Club Penguin was not dying at all, it was still growing, and it was growing in a huge wave. By the time Disney bought Club Penguin, over 12 million people would own a Club Penguin account. Disney began to expand what Club Penguin was by adding a support office, their own app, even putting their IPs in the game to advertise them. And by July of 2013, Club Penguin would hit 200 million players. Just to compare how big that is, Twitter was at 218 million users that same quarter. At its highest peak, Club Penguin hit 250 plus million accounts in 2014. But in 2015, things were not really going well. There was a decline, and because of that, Disney began to lay off employees. Believe it or not, Club Penguin was actually closed in some regions like Germany and Russia in 2015. And that same day, the Club Penguin app would be removed. And on January 30th of 2017, it was announced that Club Penguin would be discontinued by March 29th of 2017. Membership payments ended by January 31st, and free membership was given on the last few days, and the servers were just packed. Remember how usernames were like invisible so you could see through them? Yeah, it just went on forever when you just looked at it. I remember that dreadful day. I bet some of you even remember that I made like a little dedication video. And then March 30th of 2017 came at 12.01 a.m. Pacific time. Club Penguin was discontinued. Soon it would be revealed that Club Penguin Island would soon be released, and people were very angry. Very, very angry. So before I talk about Club Penguin Island, I think the big 
big question is, why would Club Penguin shut down if they're just gonna make Club Penguin Island? And that answer is pretty simple. So they can focus on a shittier version of Club Penguin, of course. But that's of course seeing it from a half-glass perspective. Disney wants to focus on a mobile version of Club Penguin because that's where the audience is now. Kids don't really play games on their PC anymore unless they're at school, and school blocks games on PC for the most part, at least in some parts of America. And, uh, yeah, they just lost their audience that way. So here's a bigger question. If that's one of the reasons, in theory, why exactly would they make a whole new game that's a lot worse than the original, when they could just port the original game onto mobile? That's what they did with Roblox, so they can't tell me that it's impossible. They did that with Club Penguin in the first place. I know that's just a theory, but it's just way too much of a coincidence that it would come to mobile. I- whatever, I, I don't even know. I don't even fucking know. So a couple of months ago, Club Penguin Island came out to mobile, and people were not really fond of that, because some people wanted to play on PC, so recently, for Mac and PC, Club Penguin Island is now available, so I tried it out. And, uh... <sighs> God, why? Destroy the child, corrupt them all. It's basically an intergalactic invasion into this space through people. I, I'm telling you, it's what- So now you have a mission as a character and you can make your own igloo. That's sort of not new. You can customize your clothes though. That's pretty cool. But the membership is pushed a lot according to other people. I need to play this more to get that experience. Okay, so I've played this for like a couple minutes, not even an hour, and I can tell you a ton of areas where microtransactions will bother you. Number one, if you customize your clothes, you'll need to pay for the membership. Number two, if you want to play the mini games that you were able to play in the original Club Penguin, now you have to pay for those. I don't even want to count numbers anymore, I don't give a shit. It turns out that also, if you want to eat virtual food, you need to have the membership. Does that even make any sense at all? So bottom line, if you actually want to play this game, you need a membership. You actually have to pay. Unlike the original Club Penguin, I, I can't really say this is a microtransaction because this is just a paid membership and not like a bunch of little things. But still, dude, Disney, why are you pushing the membership this far? If you want to play this game for free, the only thing you can do is walk around and basically talk to people. I tried talking to my friend Super Cat, right there, and we experimented with some words just to test out the sensor. So, uh, yeah. Remember how I said that I guess you could use this to talk to people if, if you can't do anything else? Well, this censors you on almost every single word that you say. The word suck is censored, and I know that can be taken out of context, but if you want to say this game sucks, that won't work. If you want to talk about politics for some reason, you can't talk about some of your, not you as a person, but I mean in general anyone, you can't talk about those people. If you want to talk about fucking Keemstar, you can't talk about him. You can talk about Walt Disney and Steve Jobs. You can't talk about like Robert Downey Jr. even though he is in a lot of Disney movies. It is literally penguin chat without anything else. There's just a bunch of buildings in the background and other penguins that pay money for this that are having fun. And it sort of does feel like a scam because you're making little kids pay for things that they're not even gonna give a shit about in a couple of years. Like eating virtual food. That doesn't make any sense. I, I, I can't fathom it. I, I can't and I can't believe it's Disney out of all companies. I mean, I know Disney has done some things similar to this in the past, and the food they sell at their theme parks is a ton of money and it's super expensive. This, this is too far. This is too far, my guy. Other than that, I would have to say I don't like how the game looks. The simple graphics of the original Penguins was just way better, but when you see them in this like 3D way, it just looks awkward. I guess you could say it's like taking a 2D cartoon and making it into like a real life person. It it just doesn't look right. There's just some things in 2D that you can't convert into 3D. And I know that the characters in Club Penguin were 3D, but that design was just better, uh, at least in my opinion. It was just very memorable and very simple. This actually does look like a mobile app. It, it looks like a mobile app on your computer. And dude, put some lighting on that. Make it look a little bit better. It's, this is coming from Disney. I know the Unreal Engine is not needed for this, but like, it's also not really focused that much on minigames. There are some, like a dance competition. That sounds exciting, right? Now, if you do want to play Club Penguin, there is a 
sort of way to play it. It is the exact same copy of Club Penguin, and it's on this website called Free Penguin. The only difference is that there's less people on it, so it's hard to play competitive mini games with other people unless you invite some friends on. But yeah, it's basically Club Penguin. Now there's ads on it. <laughs> That's funny. And yeah, I can't see any other differences. There probably is some, but I just haven't noticed. But yeah, it, it feels just like the original thing. But other than that, um, other than that and a few others, it's, it's not really what it was originally. And, uh, I don't know how you can change that. I know previously with Blockbuster, I said that you shouldn't always have a conservative view of how to run a brand or a company, but I also said that you sometimes do, because the original formula works. And for Club Penguin, you do need to have the conservative view of we need to keep it how it always has been because now it's a sloppy mess and most people are not happy. I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's playable, but it's not really the way that it originally was. I know that Club Penguin was a sequel to a sequel of a sequel, but this was the first sequel that was terrible, and it's embarrassing that a, a huge company could mess up all of this. But with this game, it, it just wasn't right, Disney. There, there wasn't a relationship there. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.